everybody. I hope you are doing well. This is Afefe with Touched by Tarot, and I am here with the monthly new moon pick-a-card reading. You all, this new moon, each one is always special and offers its own dynamics. You know, energetically, what's happening in the planets, in the cosmos, what turns up in our cards, our meditations, our vibe, our energy, you know, circumstances that, that can, you know, start to appear based on those energies. So new moons are always times to really, you know, have a heads up, pay attention. This one in Scorpio, think about all of the depth that Scorpio energy offers us, right? It is the, you know, arguably, it is the most intense sign of the Zodiac. It is a sign that in tarot, it is ruled by and represented by the death card. And death not to frighten anyone, but death meaning deep transformational um, processes that we go through. You know, sometimes it does require an actual ending of something so that something else can be rebirthed or, or you know, or brought into a situation. So, but either way, it's, it can be life changing and, and it's not easy. You know, it's not a, it's not Scorpio energy is not something that you can just coast through or coast by. It really, you know, that deep water as a water sign, it's the depths of the ocean. It is, you know, about really searching for truth. It also has a lot to do with our money. You know, it is the sign that rules what they say, death taxes and other people's money. So it is a sign where maybe it's, you know, maybe this new moon is going to have some of us really taking a, a, a deep look at our financial state, what our goals are, our investments, how we're using our resources, like all of those things uh, are also tied to Scorpio energy. So for this pick a card, you all, as I meditated and pulled the piles, uh, and again, if you're new to my channel, when I do pick a cards, I get the, the energy on the table before I tape just to save time because this alone takes me about 15 minutes. Uh, just to pray, cleanse the decks, etc. I do have 11 cards per deck. I was guided to do that this month uh, in because this is November, so representing the 11th month. I've got 11 cards in each stack. Uh, and I was the, the term that Spirit gave me, the guys gave me, you all, was sunken treasure. Like thinking about the depth of that Scorpio energy, wanting truth, going for truth, not compromising when it comes to that in what area of whatever areas of our lives. But also when we think about a treasure, we're willing to go after it, you know, sunken treasure. We're willing to do what it takes. Even if, you know, in a literal sense, when people do dives, you know, they may have to do multiple dives over a period of months or years to find, you know, a sunken shipwreck or whatever. That's that's the energy though that that the guys are saying is like how how committed are you and if you knew that the goal the end goal was going to be a treasure literally you know visualize yourself discovering that treasure box at the bottom of an ocean filled with gold and pearls and whatever you consider beautiful and valuable what would you do you know and how would you commit if you knew that that could be the end goal that's the energy that that spirit gave me to to present to you for this pick a card reading so think about that your sunken treasure in this new moon in scorpio and what you need to know about that what's going to motivate you to want to go after that and keep going after your truth your rebirth your your growth in your finances etc all right enough said pile number one I was led to pull some cubes for you all and the two that I got for you, if you're attracted to that, notice the colors as well, uh, but it is Libra and Jupiter. Those were the two that came up there and also pay attention to the colors. Libra and Jupiter, pile number one, Libra and Jupiter. Pile number two, soft pastel colors came together. These two bold, like this malachite and it's like a deep smoky quartz in here. So dark colors. Here are two pastel colors came together and it was the number 10 and Scorpio, ironically. All right. 10 and Scorpio in these soft pastels for pile number two. 10 and Scorpio. And then for pile number three, we have a, the number seven and the number four 
that came in this lovely lavender and a blue. All right, the number seven and the number four, if those ping you. All right, so I'll go one more time so you can pick your piles. Take a moment, take a breath. Pile number one is this Libra and Jupiter. And notice the colors if you're drawn to those color patterns. Pile number two, the pastels, 10 and Scorpio. And pile number three, seven and four, the lavender and blue. All right, okay. So we're gonna push these two to the side. There's three and there's two. All right, we're gonna go in now on, for those of you who chose pile number one. Let's see, your sunken treasure and this new moon in Scorpio. I'm gonna save your oracle message for the last. Okay, we have an altar, secrets, seven of swords, queen of cups, three of pentacles, another seven of swords from a different deck. So that's, that's definitely a message here. We're gonna hone in on that. We have insects giving support and the dragonfly and the moth. Hmm. We have your root chakra. We have flying and vulnerability. Mm, that's really interesting for you all. This is a powerful message. Finding your sunken treasure. And I'm going to end your call. I have a, a Oracle message from the Louise Hay deck for all of you, but but we'll get to that towards the end. I'm not even going to look at it. All right. Right away, I want to go in on this on this um, seven of swords that we got from two different decks for you all. Pile number one. So here's here's your first me message from Spirit is there's something there's something where you have lost sight or are feeling a little discouraged around the possibility that the treasure even ex still exists. You know what I mean? Seven of Swords is is a really can be a very tricky energy. And what's interesting about it is it can be where it can be self deception as well as deception that's coming from outside sources. Okay. But either way, and the fact that spirit doubled down on this energy in your reading tells me that in terms of believing in the good and believing in what is still available to you, discovering your gifts, discovering a better life, rediscovering your health, you know, improving all the aspects of life that you want that would that would mean, you know, going for your treasure, there's something that you're missing, pile number one. And and this is not an admonishment or a fussing at you from spirit. They're just simply saying with the seven of swords. Pay attention to greater um, clues that you are being given. Remember, we talked about Scorpio energy being that sign of intensity and going for the truth and digging for the truth and not and being able to see through laser focused, not giving up, not accepting anything less than the truth. There's something that has been misrepresented to you or that you have deceived yourself about in terms of what is possible for you. And after having said that, I'm drawn to this root chakra card because the root chakra is about our safety. It is about our safety net. It is about knowing what we stand on and who we can depend on. For those of you who chose pile number one, somehow your faith in, in what you have, what you know you can count on, who you know you can count on, Something that the way that your life has been flowing, you've had to question that or you've had to question your beliefs around it with that seven of swords. There's something that got misrepresented to you and it, and it shook you up a little bit to have to say, Hey, you know, am I safe? Am, am I, do I need to reevaluate, you know, what makes me feel okay and rooted and know that I can be confident in the world around me. The Queen of Cups is in your reading as well. Coming with the root chakra, that for, for many of you, now you could be a water sign. Let me say that, sun, moon, or rising. You could be a Scorpio or Cancer or Pisces, all right, if that pings you. 
But the Queen of Cups as an energy is around, is about how we nurture ourselves and how we are nurtured and supported, how we feel safe and comforted. Pile number one, you have gone undergone some things that were rough. You know, they, they, they are things, but here's the thing with the seven of swords, spirit is saying, basically don't buy into that. Don't claim the past as prologue to the future. You know what I mean? It's, it's whatever has happened. You need to be freed up from it. And there are some secrets, Scorpio of all signs will get to the bottom of secrets. There's some secrets that are on the altar. And I think what, you know, combined what spirit is saying with these cards, pile number one is an altar is a sacred space. And it is a space where you can go to your, to your guides, to your ancestors, to your angels, to God, goddess, but you can go there and know that that is um, think about altars in a church for those of you who may have, you know, a background in, in formal religion, right? It is a sacred space. It is where you can have your secrets be safe. Going back to that queen of cups, what nurtures you, what you stand on, what you feel okay about. Pile number one, your treasure has to do with understanding what is even in the treasure box. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's taking stock of what is sacred to you? What is it that you would like to find? What is it that that you have held to yourself or maybe need to hold to yourself in order to in order to take time to go after it and not worry about other people misleading you or you being misled and being able to trust that what is waiting awaiting you is special. It is a secret because it is sacred knowledge that you're getting. Some of you are studying and ready to go to work to develop your sacred knowledge and your craft and your gifts, but but you don't necessarily have to tell everybody that up front. It's almost like you need a period of exploration just between you and spirit, you and your spirit guides so that you know and can build your confidence so that no one can trick you, deceive you, take you down a different path. You'll be really clear about where it is that you're trying to go. This flying card and vulnerability are really interesting coming together as well, pile number one, because it says, taken together with that secrets in the altar, it feels like this is, this is what you're moving toward. This is what discovering that sunken treasure will feel like for you. You need to be freed of the past, of past disappointments, of, I feel like an accumulation of energy and experiences around you that made you lose sight a little bit around your safety. Start to, it just is feels a little shaky, like you need to be reminded of the solidity, being solid in, in how the universe can support you. And that altar space is, is that, that concrete area that gives you that sense of stability. It could be your meditation corner. It could be, you know, where you go in nature that feels, you know, like an altar space. It just is about sacred space where it is just between you and your angels and your guides. And what that does is it allows you to be free and be vulnerable so you can have that sense of flying, have that sense of, I will, you know, I can soar, I can get to wherever I need to go. I am free from the shackles of any past experiences, fears, behaviors, conditioning that may have been keeping me tied up. All right, I've got two more cards here the three of pentacles and insects for support. That also says it's time to get into nature. You've got that earthly energy and you've got insects for support. And notice the flying. So there's a couple of references there even. I can tie that into insects, right? Pay attention to the symbolically what insects like the dragonfly, like the moth, 
change and transformation. The moth also being very tied to Scorpio because it is tied to the death card in tarot. So there is this transformation that you all are undergoing, pile number one, and it is a transformation that takes you from a space of doubting and feeling like there's been a lack in something to reaffirming your treasure. And the way that you do that is you got to spend time with spirit to re-identify it. What is it that you really want? What is it that you would love to discover? What is it that, that you still want to learn and experience in this lifetime? And it's something that, that spirit wants you to just keep between you and them. It's like your journal, your meditation space, your higher self. It's that because I think for some of you, you have relied on connections with others, leadership from others, promises that others have made to you, that when they didn't come true, it made you question the root and the foundation of what you could actually have and be in, and feel entitled to. And so there's this work that, that's being done. The insect, the, the natural kingdom in general, insects and otherwise, animals, etc., they work. They work to stabilize the, the root chakra, the earth chakra. Okay, there's that building that's taking place within you. And so your treasure is to allow yourself to be vulnerable with spirit. Don't worry about being misled by others, but be vulnerable with spirit to, so that you can rediscover and, and reclaim what your treasure is, what your, what your hopes are, your dreams, your aspirations, the experiences that you still want to have. Yeah. And okay. Thank you for that. Because you have the, I got a clarity here, that nine of swords. There's been a lot of, you all have had a lot of interesting, I'll use that word, interesting circumstances around you and around people and around what you felt like you could count on. And I think you've been through some experiences that, that shook you up. It made you question being able to be vulnerable. But now you have that seven of wands that says, valor, be brave, take that leap. And the leap that you're taking, pile number one, is flying. That's exactly, that's what this person is doing. You are flying, all right? Flying into the arms of your guides, your spirits, angels, God, goddess, okay? Jesus, whom Allah, whomever you, however you identify that is trusted, that is beyond reproach, that is where your sunken treasure, that's the truth that you are going to get to during this new moon energy. All right. Now I'm ready to get to your, um, your, I trust my, your Oracle. I trust my inner ding. Whoa. Talk about being vulnerable and notice your inner ding. A lot of your reading is around just you and spirit coming together, you and your higher self coming together so that you can be vulnerable, so that you know you are in a space where you are safe and you can trust. And this deception, this misinformation, this other stuff that can come from outside sources, it gets blocked. It gets moved away. All right. You trust your inner ding. This is you and your higher self. And it says you were born with an inner knowing what Louise, this is a Louise Hay deck what Louise calls your inner ding. Listen to it and let it guide your actions. Your actions are going to be to get with spirit. In nature especially, pay attention to what flies around you, what moves around you in the natural world, okay? Because you're gonna pay, in paying attention to that, it's gonna give you, it's gonna ping or ding something within you that gives you a hint about how you move forward to find your treasure. All right, pile number one. That was really powerful and so in alignment with this Scorpio energy. We got to remember too, I didn't mention at the start of the tape that uh, Mars is also in Scorpio, I think until the 24th of November. So Mars being, and, and Mars was formerly the, um, considered the ruler of Scorpio in now modern times, they say Pluto, but think about it. Mars is that energy of aggression, of go get it, of persistence, of muscling up. And for you, spirit is saying, pile number one, spirit is saying your, your, your guides are your muscle. Your higher self is your muscle. And it's time to reconnect with that 
in order to find your treasure and recognize those truths, okay? All right, moving on. Pile number two, those of you who were drawn to the pastel colored, the number 10 especially, and interesting, interestingly enough, the Scorpio. All right, pile number two. We have solitude, finances, very, very uh, prevalent around Scorpio energy, rules, you know, finances and other people's money. Here's your oracle. We'll deal with that in a moment. We'll close out with that. We have the four of swords. I'm going to put that next to solitude because that is a card of reflection and rest and, and having, you know, paying attention, getting the signs. All right. We have the Ten of Cups heading towards joy. We have the Five of Cups. So that's a growth spurt. Notice all these cups, all this cups energy right here. Uh, new moon in Scorpio, water sign. We have the Ace of Swords. So that rest is going to give you um, what you need to move forward in a new direction. We have the Medicine Bag, your treasure. Ooh, this is your money. Time is of the essence. All right, so you all may have a fine. If you chose this pile, you may have a financial thing going on with you right now uh, or where finances have been um, really pressing on your mind. Not saying in a bad way, even just thinking about money, plans, your financial standing, your stability, etc. We have into the unknown. Some of you may be considering retirement, taking a vacation, making an investment, buying a house, selling a home, moving. There's some there's some change in life that is connected to your your money and your ability to um, to feel safe and you're going to have to need time to get take stock of that. That Scorpio energy, um the getting to the truth, doing the research, making sure that you fully understand what your moves and and both the risks and the rewards and a journey to wholeness. Ooh, that's that's a big card around what this time of life is telling you. What's happening going forward. Wow. Beautiful reading for you all, pile number two. I need a sip of my little smoothie behind that. Okay. I started, I started interpreting as I was putting the cards down. So I want to just go in a little deeper on that because I could see the story. I could see it coming together as the cards were falling. So pile number two. This new moon in Scorpio is preparing you for something that you either are, it's already on the horizon or you've been thinking about it. It's it could be emotion. It could be something that you know is beginning to dawn on you. You're making plans for the future because this into the unknown feels very you know very direct. And it's saying there's something around you or some aspect of your life that your sunken treasure. It's like the search that you are are going toward. You may feel like you don't know it all. You may feel like there's a lot of unknowns. There's you know, if you are planning to move or retire or take a new job or start a new business, start a website, take a class, any any new area of life that you haven't previously experienced, it is the unknown and you are going there. That is one thing Scorpio does not hesitate. Scorpio is pretty fearless um, in terms of the willingness to show up and take the plunge and go. This is a journey to wholeness for you. There is, a, there is, this is a rewarding time of life, Spirit is saying for you all, pile number two, or, or to reassure you that you are headed into a more rewarding time of life. And it may feel a little um, you know, you may feel a little hesitant because of these unknowns, but it is a journey to wholeness. The solitude with your finances and time is of the essence. Those three things and your medicine bag, you know, your, your tread, talk about, oh, I just, let me go back to that because this reading is about your sunken treasure and there's your medicine bag with your treasure. Pile number two. 
you are on a journey to gaps to literally go after your treasure to find your treasure to find where you want to live who you want to be with how life needs to flow all of the things that that you desire all the things that have been pressing in on your mind and there is this space of you having spent some time alone or perhaps needing to spend some time alone right now to come up with a plan but your plan is leading you to fullness like it's not the solitude is not about isolation it is about coming up with the plan it is about going after your treasure and this is directly tied to your finances, which again, Scorpio energy is has a lot to do with other people's money, meaning the government, meaning taxes, meaning public space, public funds, um, how, how your money may be tied in some way to that, your property taxes even, you know, for some of you, it may be you know, just as an example, property taxes are so high, you may be considering a move and that is an unknown for you or something around adjusting how you are living, finding your treasure, your journey to wholeness and time is of the essence. There is because that card came, I feel like for some of you, there could be a sense of pressure or a deadline or a renewal of some sort where you need you feel you're feeling like you need to make a decision by a certain date by a certain time frame all right and it's saying time is of the essence and spirit is recognizing that but check it out you have the ace of swords here so spirit is reassuring you that ace of swords is clarity the clarity that comes from the four of swords Four Swords says, take a step back, rest a moment so that you can get the clarity. And here comes your ace behind that that says, and here it is. You will be clear. You will understand what it is that you need to do around your treasure, around your money. And when you need to do it, time is of the essence. You will get that. And once you do, it's going to give you what had felt like a, an emotional struggle because it feels like whatever it is that you do, it impacts not just you. It seems to impact um, those around you or what you hope to have around you, the people you hope to have around you and what you have envisioned for your life. Some of you, Spirit is giving me, some of you could be feeling like you are on a solitary journey. And the unknown, uh, either you could have lost someone, you could be a widow or a widower, um, you, it could be a breakup, but there's an adjustment that you're making where you have to figure some things out on your own, but it relates to your larger domestic life. And Spirit is saying, do not think that even if it feels like the, the, the situation that you're in, you've got to figure out the weight is on you, you know, the responsibility is on your shoulder to figure out what to do to make this move, to recoup your finances or grow your finances, to have your stability, to feel like you're up against this time, you know, this time is of the essence, but you will have the information that Ace of Swords is coming. If you slow down long enough, take a breath, get some clarity around what your options are, weigh your options out, and trust that you will be made whole, that journey to wholeness. Treat this whole time of life as a journey, pile number two. Spirit is saying that clearly, recognizing that just as we see this clock in the background of this time is of the essence, you know, this, this time period is shifting and changing. It is not permanent. It is, you are being led from one state to another. And understanding that ultimately, whatever disappointments came out of that five of cups, which is that emotional turmoil and struggle, it is leading you to the ten of cups, which is fullness, which is, which is, you know, especially in a domestic front, it is, it is having joy and happiness and, and the people around you that make you feel good. There's a five of discs here. This is worry and it says worry. This is money. 
This is your finances. This is, and if not just money, it could be your health. It could be uh, health care costs. It could be what what makes you feel um, stable. What's holding you up right now? And that time of the essence could be that you you feeling like you've got to make some moves around it. Spirit, what is why is all of this around the money and the worry? What do they need to know about their money, their finances, their health? What they can depend on. Their prosperity, Queen of Wands, Queen of Wands. Spirit wants you to be confident that the, your supply will be met. That's that Ace of Swords energy as well. Spirit is saying, be confident that this is a journey to wholeness. That if there is a struggle here, it is not permanent, and you've just got to get you've just got to get quiet enough to hear where Spirit is leading you into the unknown and not not fear that your treasure is the journey your treasure is the journey mm. and just as i said that the world came the journey the world the world is your oyster the journey to wholeness moving from what closing a chapter closing one chapter and, and, and a sense of completion in this one chapter. And also, I'm going to say, I, I said at the beginning of your reading pile number two, I feel like for a lot of you, this is thinking about moving. You may be downsizing. You may be buying a new home. You may be renting a new apartment. You may be moving to another state. You may be thinking about moving to be closer to family with this Ten of Cups or spending more time with family, just going to visit more often. But for you all, the any restriction that you have felt due to financial concerns in particular, or health concerns, or, or what you are being given, what you have to work with, your treasure. Remember, you actually, you know, the, the, the onus of this reading has been your sunken treasure in Scorpio, and you actually got the treasure card, the medicine bag. But your medicine bag is just that, pile number two. is A medicine bag in, in indigenous um, native culture is those items of value that we carry as medicine. We, we trust it to, to symbolize our divine connection to something greater that protects us, that prospers us, that, that gives us guidance and direction. Where is your medicine bag? That could be, that's part of what this new moon in Scorpio is bringing you, is gathering your implements. What is that? Is that sitting down with your bank statement, taking stock of your credit cards, um, um, you know, figuring out how much you can save visiting the places that you may be thinking about or the trips that you may this could be travel the trips that you may want to take or always desire to take beginning to actually map out a budget ace of swords and the queen of wands having the confidence that this is doable may seem like a lot but it's doable because you're on a journey to wholeness pile number uh two now i'm ready for your <laughs> I don't, I try, I really do try not to look at these oracle, these final oracle cards until I get there because I know then I will appreciate the message. So this has been over to the side. I didn't really hone in on it until just now. Your oracle closing out pile number two says, I can do it. Trust. All right. Trust. I can do it. In times of trouble, remember this, who you think you are cannot handle this challenge, but who you really are can and will. Oh my goodness, does that not speak to the totality of your reading, pile number two? All right? You may feel like this this situation, whatever this time is of the essence and this money and movement and how you're going to move on into the unknown perhaps, all of these things may feel really, really overwhelming to you, but Spirit has said, your, your treasure lies in being able to tap into your absolute confidence and take, take the time that you need. Take a beat, take a breath, you know, go regroup and map out a plan systematically, step by step. Here's what I have. Here's what needs to get done. Here's the situation. Here's my options. And that Ace of Swords is going to come to say, here's, here's the clarity that you needed. 
Here's the ideas. Here's the messages. Here's the phone calls you need to make or the emails that you're going to receive because you can do it. Trust it, pile number two. You can do it. All right? All right. Wow. I really enjoyed that. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you and find out, you know, how that how that pinged and how that goes for you. All right? All right. Now, moving on to pile number three. Those of you who chose the numbers seven and four. We had that lavender seven and that blue four. Those of you who chose that. Let's see. Your sunken treasure. New moon in Scorpio. Sip of my protein shake. All right, out the gate, we have trapped, feel a feeling of being trapped, jealousy. Let's put that to the side. I don't even want to look at it yet. Your or, your uh, last card was an oracle. Two of wands and a two of pentacles. That's interesting. You've got those double twos coming together. All right, this is relationship stuff I'm feeling coming forward for, for pile number three, right out the gate. Page of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, your future, mm-hmm, this is relationship stuff. The Unbinding, ooh, Unbinding, let's put that next, near the trap. All right, we're going to unbind it. Follow the leader and you, your Lumine essence. All right. This is your divine. This is, okay, pile number three. Let me say this going in. This is definitely your higher self that has shown up here to speak on your behalf. A hundred percent. All right. Your higher self, or for some of you, you may identify more with a primary guide. If there is a guide that you know who it is, you've kind of got this synergy with them, um, or an ancestor, someone who frequently visits you, you know who it is. Like whoever your main connect is spiritually, that is who is speaking in this reading. All right. So let's give respect and honor to that because that, that energy has shown up here. I've got the reason you heard me say early on is I was, I was, um, spreading the cards that I feel strongly that this is for you all pound number three, this is relationship oriented. And I say that because right away the, the trapped and the jealousy and then the unbinding, just the way those came and then twos, twos, which are often, um, indicators of partnerships. There's a couple of things. I don't necessarily see this as when I say relationships, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, a marriage, a spouse, a lover, etc., a partner. Um, it could be, but this also for some of you feels like in the workplace, like someone you work with or around, um, you could feel trapped in a job and and there's someone around you who exhibits some jealousy, some pettiness, some nonsense. And the unbinding could be, you know, you're thinking about your future. Remember, we got this upper world card, which it says there, future. Okay? So you're thinking about, look, I need to get out of this situation. I do feel trapped. There is this, you know, there is this jealousy around me that is unwarranted. Um, and I need to get, I need to be free of it the unbinding. I really need to be free of it. And spirit is, you know, this guide who is sitting over this reading is saying, gotcha, gotcha. Follow the leader. Follow me. Follow my guidance. A lot, work with me. Listen to me. Let's sit down, you know, get your intuition together. Do your purification. Do what you, however you center yourself to receive your messages. For some, for some of you, I'm feeling like it happens when you do free writing. That's how your guide comes through in your free writing. Some of you, it, it is through music, meditation. Some of you, it is when you are in the shower or near water, which is interesting because we are, this is a new moon in Scorpio water, uh, watery energy. So some of you, it happens when you are in the bath or the shower. Uh, your private moments, 
Um, and for some of you, it could be in your dream state, but you know, if, because you know, this guide and this, the guide's energy, you know, how that guide typically communicates with you and, and, and speaks to you. Okay. So follow that. The guide is saying, follow me. I am here to help you figure out how to navigate through this situation because it's not healthy and, and you should not have to feel trapped. And your, your avenue to being um, unbound, your treasure, this energy is keeping you from discovering your treasure. And that is why these particular twos came forward in pentacles and in fire. Because pentacles is about building a different type of partnership that is more healthy and productive and doesn't make you feel trapped. Healthy partnerships free you to discover more about yourself. And there's this future that you are looking toward planning for knight of wands and pentacles. Notice how they, they, I'm going to switch these around because energetically you got backup pentacles, pentacles, wands, wands. Okay. This is a fresh start page of pentacles a fresh start in a new type of partnership that does not make you feel trapped. Whether again, whether that's in your work, your or it could be romance for some of you, you'll know your situation and how it pings. But for sure, this is in the area of partnerships. And so you want a healthy partnership. Page of Pentacles is about the newness, the unbinding, getting out of that, that situation where you feel trapped. And having a vision for the future. Two of Wands. That's what happens here. See, in Two of Wands, many depictions, and this is a great deck to show it. There's this whole journey, this whole path going forward. Two of Wands is about having the focus and the vision to, to begin to execute a plan. And a knight versus a page. A page is brand new energy, beginning to think about the future and what a different kind of partnership could be Change. Night is movement. Like, okay, we're on it. We're not just thinking about it. We're on it. I have a, you have a plan for the future. You have a goal for the future. You have an idea of where you want to go and what you want the future to look like. And you're ready to move on it with the Knight of Wands. Follow the leader. You are, you are following your guide. You are following your guide, your higher self. You are following the divine, um, guidance that you are being given or you will be given. You just have to tap into it. But in the new moon in Scorpio, part of, you know, your, your treasure is coming to grips with the fact that, and being honest, because Scorpio does not uh, compromise when it comes to honesty, being honest that whatever this situation is, it has you feeling trapped. And, and, and there's a core uh, there's a core energy of jealousy around it. I want to get an idea around what that is. This is monetary. You deserve more. You deserve more. Definitely, you deserve more. And your guide is here to say, I'm, I'm with you to help make the change in a different kind of partnership, a different job, a different vision, a different path forward. But, but we're going to need to work on that together to nail that vision down because when you can see it, feel it, taste it, touch it, you know, almost then you are unbound, you are free and you can begin and spirit can begin to open. The universe will open those doors. Things start happening. You know, you, you start people, the right things, the right situations, the right people start coming your way. That is that change that comes, but it comes from having a solid vision. So you can't just like, okay, I'm going through this. Help me, you know, help free me, help unbind me. I deserve more. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for more. And your guide is like, absolutely. But we got to come up with a plan. And don't you turn around and get pile number three. Look at you. You've got Scorpio, uh, the death card, which is ruled by Scorpio. This is your time. Okay. We're, you know, in terms of a timing element, in terms of this new moon and understanding where you are in the month of November, 2023, you are definitely looking at your future. It is time for a rebirth. It is time for you to have more. 
more, meaning more money, more healthy relationships, and feeling like you are accomplishing more. I do feel like for many of you, the more I look at this and vibe with it, I feel like for many of you, this is around a workplace situation more so even than a, a romance or a partnership or a marriage. It could be. And again, you'll know that. You know your circumstances. But I've, I'm, I'm seeing enough of a transition here that it's, it, and, and remembering too that Scorpio rules shared resources. So that could be in a partnership, a marriage, a domestic situation, a, a romantic relationship, but that also comes into play in the workforce, in, in you know, those kind of dynamics between, um, you know, employer and employee, or if you're working for yourself, your partnerships are people holding, pulling their weight, are, are people showing up and doing what, what they promised to do. And so there's a part of you that's been feeling restricted by not having that come to light the way it should or play out. But now is your time for being free. This rebirth is freeing you. That is your unbinding is free, freedom. And your spirit guide is saying, follow the leader. You've got two very strong cards here that show a pathway. You see that? Pile number three. So this really is about you developing and seeing your way forward. Developing a plan and seeing your way forward to a future, to your future of change in a healthier partnership, a healthier dynamic. Your oracle says... I am open and receptive to love. All right. So that makes me rewind it a little bit. Um, I went in on the business aspect and I still feel that for many of you. But for those of you, uh, this in relation to romance, and if you are feeling trapped, if you are feeling like there's more, then this is a message from your higher self and your spirit guide. And it says, life is always trying to love you but you need to be open to see it. Complete this sentence. I could make it easier for life to love me by what? That's something you might want to write down and journal and your spirit guide will speak to you on. I could make it talking about your, your sunken treasure, going after your treasure and utilizing this, this profound Scorpio, you know, truth has to win energy. This is that time to dig deep. All right. It, it, it would make life easier, uh, easier for life to love you by doing what? Now, the obvious answer here is by freeing yourself from what feels makes you feel trapped and being willing to uh, experience this rebirth so that you can go towards a future that is perhaps takes you on a new journey, follow the leader, following your higher self, your soul, your soul, discovering your soul's purpose or feeling more aligned with your soul's purpose. And, and that runs counter to whatever this is that's got you feeling trapped. I do want to get to the root of this, um, this jealousy that I'm seeing though. I want to see what is this jealousy about? Spying. Ah, okay. So somebody's looking at you or, and, and this is talking about being truthful. If this is you looking at somebody else or feeling jealous of someone else who has more and you feel trapped, you know, you know how to make those adjustments. All things are leading you back to your higher self, your spirit guide, your main spiritual connection that is saying, follow me to get forward and change the situation and have the rebirth that's waiting for you so that you can have more. This right here is a cycle that you've undergone, this spying and jealousy and feeling trapped. This is a cycle that you've been dealing with or something that's been showing up in your reality, but your 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 main main is showing up to say, mm -mm, let's, let's regroup. Let's come up with a different plan. And that plan is to have a future, the upper world, a future that and the upper world, meaning this 3d world that you experience and that you are living, that makes you feel free. And the unbinding is a process. It doesn't say you're already unbound. It says this is unbinding, meaning you are undergoing a process of transformation, especially during Scorpio season, pile number three. 
Wow. Spirit came through big time with that message for you. And, and please give a nod to your guide, to your higher self, to, to your main connection, because they came through big time for you all. All right? All right. That's what I got for you all. I wish you all the best of luck. Let me know. Uh, I welcome your feedback. Again, I will post below. You know, if you're interested in tarot, you read, please consider getting my guide. It's available on Amazon. Also, I am doing a tarot course that's going to start in December. Ed registration closes on November 20th. So I will also do a post uh, with the details uh, in the description box below this. All right. Take care, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.